Hello, everyone. Welcome to Backyard Musings, broadcasting live from Apple Valley. I'm Steve. I'm Scott. Thank you so much for joining us today. A UCL study found that 70% of young people with long COVID recovered within 24 months, but recovery was less likely among older teenagers, females, and those from deprived backgrounds. Researchers emphasize the need for further investigation and collaboration to address unresolved cases. The children and young people with long COVID clock study, we'll refer to it as clock, published in Nature Communications Medicine and funded by the National Institute for Health and Care Research, NIHR, is the world's largest longitudinal cohort study on long COVID in children. Would you like to know more? So yeah, this long COVID thing, this is pretty interesting. We have uh, yeah. we have a couple of family members that have suffered from this for a couple of years. I mean, they're and they're elderly. I mean, I say elderly; they're older than I am. And um, yeah, it's been tough. It's been a tough haul. So uh, the researchers, led by Professor Sir Terence Stevenson and Professor Roz Shafran. Uh, both UCL Great Ormond Street Institute of uh, Child Health, I guess that's, that's where they study, I guess? Yeah, that's where they study, yeah. Um, asked young people aged 11 to 17 about their health. Three, six, 12, and 24 months after taking a PCR test for the COVID virus between September of 2020, which was what, probably about six months into it, right? Six, for us? yeah, right and about, then, yep. And then March 2021, which we were, we were pretty involved in it by then. Full blown, yeah. Yeah, that was a year into it. So, they also asked them to recall their symptoms at the time of taking the test. In February of 2022, the researchers published a consensus definition of long COVID, which involved a young person having more than one symptom, such as tiredness, trouble sleeping, shortness of breath, or headaches alongside problems with their mobility, uh, either mobility, self-care, doing usual uh, activities, having pain, discomfort, or feeling very worried or sad. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you talk about a teenager, uh, those, <laughs> yeah. those could be all of the above any time of the day, whether you got COVID or not. So, so have, have your loved ones uh, experienced any of these symptoms as you were saying it? Uh, tiredness. Yeah. A lot of tiredness, um, oh. headaches, uh, pressure on the head. And oh. again, I don't know if this is all from that, but, uh, they, they, uh, both, um, the husband and the wife had COVID at least once that I know of. They oh. also had, uh, the shots and I believe they had at least one, uh, booster. And uh, after the second booster, they both said that they would not go back and get another booster. Oh, so, I wonder if the booster had anything to do with, uh, you know, I don't know. It. I mean, because these, these, these uh, drugs are untested. They went through so fast, you know, right. I'm not knocking the drugs. I'm just saying it's the fact of the matter is they went through so fast, you know. Yeah. And I'm not saying that they didn't didn't help some people. Maybe they did. And I don't know what booster or what um uh injection they received Pfizer you know, or moderna yeah i don't know what where it was from but i know there's been some hits on some of those companies that have not been real good but then again you know if um you know if it if it helps you then you're you're all about it if it didn't help you then you're you know you're not in the camp so you know it's a it's a tough one but yeah. i don't know i i never took I never took a shot and I never got, uh, I never got a booster. And to my knowledge, I never, I tested positive for, for COVID, but I think it was a false test because I was driving and they sent me home. But then I took a test, um, about two hours later and I tested negative. Mm. So yeah, it was kind of a weird deal, but you know, I'm not saying that I know a lot of people that did get it and they were very, very sick. So mm. All right, so the researchers used this definition for their new study, which examined data from 12,632 young people who had a PCR test for SARS-CoV-2, the virus that uh, causes COVID-19. So it was, I, I mispronounced it, SARS-CoV-2. 
They found that around 25 to 30 percent of young people met the research definition of long COVID 24 months after their initial PCR test. Of the 12,632 young people in total, there were 943 who had tested positive when first approached and provided answers at every time point, 3, 6, 12, and 24 months after their original test. So what is that? So it's about, what, 7, 8% maybe? Yeah. So I don't know. That's... Uh, 7, 8%, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good group of, uh, of people to be testing, you know, to over over 12,000. So yeah, uh, interesting. So... So of these 943 young people, 233 met the research definition of long COVID three months after their initial positive test. At six months, 130 continued to meet the research definition of long COVID. So that's, I mean, that's a, that's a substantial decrease, but that's still a lot of people. Um, It is a lot of people. Yeah. 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 At, uh, at 12 months, 94 continued to fulfill the long COVID research definition. However, only 68 of these 943 children and young people, uh, 7.2%, it says, continued to fulfill the long COVID research definition when contacted 24 months after their initial positive test. This means that 24 months after a proven COVID infection, 165 of the 233 young people about 70% who had long COVID three months after the infection and provided information at every time point in the research had recovered. But 68 of the 233, about 30% had not. So yeah, that's staggering. And this is kind of weird, right? Because if you remember, that was one of the big deals that, you know, kids weren't getting this stuff, especially like right. school kids. They, they were kind of immune to it so are not immune but they just weren't catching it as much or it wasn't well well young kids i don't think people meant teenagers i think they meant kids like elementary school age kids well i know that was a big blowback about as far as getting um vaccines right i mean yeah there were some that were saying masking and that kind of stuff yeah and and there were parents that were just blowing a gasket saying hey you ain't poking my kid that's two or three or five or whatever so yeah um Anyway. Okay. Older teenagers and the most deprived were less likely to have recovered. And strikingly, females were almost twice as likely to still meet the research definition of long COVID at 24 months compared to males. I wonder if that's because the females are just more detail oriented in giving the symptoms and stuff. I wonder, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm really interested to see if uh, what, what they consider to be deprived. That's the what? Uh, interesting. The you what? Know, when they, they say that the older teenagers and the most deprived. Deprived. Oh, yeah. Deprived. Like, uh, I wonder you know, if that's uh, mon- um, uh, low money. In- low, low income. In- yeah. yeah. Um, no kids. access to health care. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Oh. That's kind of interesting that they were. Yeah. 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 However, the researchers note that they did not assess menstruation and some symptoms such as headaches and tiredness may be attributable attributable to premenstrual syndrome given the high proportion of girls. Okay. Um, Study chief investigator and first author, Professor Sir Terence Stevenson said, our findings show that for teenagers who fulfilled our research definition of long COVID, three months after a positive test for the COVID virus, the majority have recovered after two years. This is good news, but we intend to do further research to try better to bu- try to better understand why 68 teenagers, teenagers had not recovered. So, yeah. the clock study is a major study funded by the National Institute for Healthcare and Research (NIHR) and UK Research and Innovation (UKRE) to help improve understanding of the symptoms, causes, and treatment of long term longer term effects of COVID-19 in people who have not become unwell enough to be admitted to hospital. The study was co-led by UK Health Security Agency in collaboration with researchers at Great Ormond Street Hospital for Children, NHS Foundation Trust, GOSH, Imperial College London, King's College London, Manchester University, NHS Foundation Trust, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, holy mackerel. This list is like as long as your arm. 
Holy cow. I know. Okay, go ahead with the next one. <laughs> um, okay, so following the 20 more 24 month results, data from all points, all time points are now publicly available to other researchers. The UCL researchers recently published a documentary alongside colleagues at Gosh and the University of Brighton on why better collaboration is needed between clinicians, uh, interventionalists, epidemiologists, statisticians, and those with uh, uh, who lived the experience to ensure a more effective coordinated response ahead of future pandemics. You so think I, that the information will be shared? I mean, that's, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What What's the deal with that? Why are we not Why are we not sharing? But yeah, and that that, that kind of. I don't know. It almost like it alludes to the fact that there was some shenanigans going on. And we found that out that, you know, there was a lot of false information Trying to hide. Yeah. Uh -huh. It just, yeah. So maybe that's why they weren't being real cooperative, but yeah, they, I think they should, you know, I remember, but well, we can go ahead and finish up and then I'll, I'll make this comment. So, all right. The symptoms reported by participants at the time of testing are subject to recall bias. That's understandable. 24 months after, you know, as they were reported at the time of first contact with the clock study. However, three months, six months, 12 and 24 month systems were reported at time they were being experienced of the 31,012 children, young and young people invited to fill in a questionnaire 24 months post PCR test. 12,632 of them participated. Well, that's a little bit less than one third. And, and so this is a self-selected group which may introduce bias in the results. So original PCR tests were taken before the Delta and Omicron variants became dominant. So the findings may not reflect the long-term effects of these variants. Children and young people self-reported their symptoms in some instances such as to uh, assess shortness of breath. It may have been better to conduct in-person medical interviews. However, this was not feasible or practical during the study, uh, the study period. Importantly, the study primarily focuses on children and young people in England, and the findings may not be directly applicable to the other populations or countries with the different healthcare systems, vaccination rates, and demographics. So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So I remember when this whole thing was kind of breaking and some of the doctors were kind of coming out against this. There was a couple of doctors that had, I want to say like a half a dozen, maybe, maybe a little less, maybe a little more clinics in the Bakersfield area. And these guys were young guys. Um, I wish I could remember their names because they, they were on the news, they were on YouTube and they were coming out and saying, Hey, you know, we're, we're not, totally end all this stuff. We, we don't, we don't think we're, we're treating it basically just like another, another virus, like a flu virus type thing. And, uh, oh man, they caught some really severe backlash on that. And, um, uh, and they yeah, went against the narrative, especially in California. Exactly. Exactly. And so, um, I don't know. It's, it's like anything else, you know, you gotta, you gotta listen to both sides, but that's their problem nowadays in almost anything, right? Nobody, nobody on one side or the other of, a, of a, an issue wants to listen or or debate. The, de the debate is over now. And it's all about, well, again, this thing, I think a lot of this thing came down to just like a lot of stuff, money, because there was so much money thrown at this thing for masks and uh, uh, what do you call that stuff you put on your hands? The Purell. Uh, yeah, the cleanser. Cleanser. Cleanser, yeah. yeah. I just went through this last night with, you know, my wife not wanting to listen to my side of the story. So I live it every day, Scott. <laughs> every day, Scott. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to touch that one. So. Thanks for touching that nerve, Scott. <laughs> not going to go there, Steve. Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, it just, you know, we got to be open minded about some of this stuff because I think I think we we overreacted on some things. I mean, I'm grateful that they were able to get these 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 um, vaccines out so quickly. It shows what they can do if they're allowed to do it. But again, they were untested, and we're kind of spoiled here. We are our FDA man. They are all about testing and retesting and making sure. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, they are very stringent. Yeah. Good good topic. Okay, well, um, this was our. Uh, 
afternoon topic. Uh, thank you very much for listening. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Take care, everyone. Thanks.